Okay, so let's go ahead and get our program to actually run, and we're going to go ahead and make a, a function, define a function blend, uh, and I'll warn you right now, I'm going to disappoint you. We're going to make a stub for blend, and then we're going to come back and do more test cases. So, okay. Um, so, uh, how do we make a function of PHP? You read uh, chapter 10 of the book, I think it was in the reading, and the syntax there is you say the word function, followed by the name of the function, blend, and then the parameters. Parameters, again, are uh, variable names that when you call the function will get initialized. So I'm going to make two variables to hold the two words that are being given to the function blend. I'm going to think of myself as being the function blend. Somebody else comes up and says, hey, blend, I'm going to give you smoke and fog, and I'll do some work and come back with the answer, smog. Hey, blend, Christiansburg and Virginia. I'll do some work that we'll have to figure out and return Christiania. Okay, so I'm given two words um, and they're not, I, I try to get descriptive variable names uh, but these are just any two generic words, uh, so it's not a whole lot I can say. I'll just call them word one and word two, because there is a first and a second, so it's different order, so I think one and two are appropriate and they're just words. Okay, uh, and for right now, I'm going to say return, uh, this is a stub. Okay, which is not the correct answer. And I'm also going to go ahead and put a little comment at the top just sort of saying, uh, if you look at this code here, if you're somebody who just saw the two lines of code, they would have to be a little bit psychic to figure out what word one and word two were meant to be and what blend is supposed to be doing. Let's go ahead and just help them out. Try to be short, but I want a quick one-line description of what this function does. Return a linguistic blend of two words. Um, and I'm not going to say exactly how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to say that's the job of this function, uh, return the blend of two words. Uh, and I'll go ahead and I'll just sort of mention word one is a string, word two is a string, and that will be my comment. Uh, now that I've actually named them word one and word two I, in the comments, I can even say a linguistic blend of word one and Okay, um, so I, I want minimal comments, but I do want some comments saying what does the function do, not how it does it. Oh, we're going to split the word based on this, blah, blah, blah. Um, or we're going to call substring. I think we will call substring, but we're not going to talk about that in the description. And word one, word two, the, you know, this may, in general, I want to describe what these parameters are here. It's so just like the two words I'm going to blend. It was already implicit in my description. But, okay, this is good. Let's make sure I have this right. Let's go ahead and run our blend function. How do you run this function from the command line again? Right. You say PHP followed by the name of the file. Kind of like running a Java program. You say Java and then the name of the class, the class file that you want to run the main of. Um, here we just say there's no main, but we just say Java and then a file name blend1.php. And it runs, actual, this is a stub, desired, smog. Actual, this is a stub, desired, motel. Okay, it sounds good. Oh my goodness, what have we forgotten? New lines, let's fix that up right away. Uh, at the end of each echo statement, I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new line at the very end. Okay. Uh, Vim or VI is a great editor. Let's see you do things like that very quickly. Uh, run that program again. Okay, now we, I'm running my program. I get this is a stub, but I desired the word smog. I got this is a stub, but I desired the word motel. Okay, fair enough. Uh, go back to the editor. Uh, before I flesh out the stub, I want to make sure I really understood this. We realized, gosh, I thought I understood the problem, but I hadn't. it hadn't even occurred to me that half the uh, word wasn't defined, so what that really meant in the case of odd length. So let me go put in some more test cases uh, in addition to these. Let me do a copy-paste of that. Fill these in for now. I'll go ahead and 
going to be my generic test case. I'm going to copy and paste these lines several times. Um, great, I did a word like uh, uh, Christiansburg that was long and even length. I did a word like Radford that was kind of long and odd length. Did some shorter words like rain and motor. Um, are there any shorter words yet we can try? Yeah, how about a, link, a word that's just two letters long? Uh, actually, I'm going to go down here at the bottom. A, B, and C, D. If I blend A, B, and C, D, I take the first half of the word A, B, that's A. Second half of C, D, yeah, I expect to get A, D is my answer. Okay. Can I get any shorter than a, a word with two letters? Well, yeah, I can get a word with one letter, right? Okay. Now let's get a word with one letter. The word uh, Y and the word Z. What's the first half of the word Y? And now remember, we just said the halfway, the dividing point was going to be in the middle round down. And that would be the splitting point. And then before the split is the first half, after the split is the second half. Okay. So yeah, I think the first half of the word Y is nothing. It's the halfway point rounded down is zero characters in the first half. Uh, with Z, the splitting point is right at character zero. And then we have the, everything after it, which is Z. So I think if we blend these, the way I have to find this, we should get the letter Z. Yeah, writing these test cases, I'm actually thinking through this in a way I had not thought through before. and I'm, Hopefully my code will, will be correct, and I'm, I'm now better prepared to write the code. So, Okay, uh, can I get any shorter than a, a, a word of length one? Well, we're computer scientists, right? What are our favorite numbers? Zero, one, and many. We've tried many, even tried two. Uh, we tried one, how about length zero? Yeah, length zero, I cut it in half. Well, I have zero characters in the first half and zero characters in the second half. Append them together and you get the entire string, the empty string. Okay. Yeah, so if I blend these, I take the empty string from the first half, and then I take the second word, cut it in half, take the second half, that's the empty string. Empty string and empty string adds up to empty string. Okay, I better get the empty string here. Interesting. Okay. Um, so these are other test cases I want to do, and then I might make even further test cases. Uh, that are maybe combinations. So let me go ahead and give me uh, the empty string followed by uh, smog. And hopefully I'll get odd. And I'll swap the same, I'll do the same thing but swapped. I'll take uh, what is smog and empty string. I should get sm. Okay. So and maybe I'll, if I'm, depending on how uh, uh, exact I want to be, I can go ahead and, you know, combinations of length one and many, length one and length zero, things like that. But my favorite number is zero, zero, one, two. Uh, when testing numeric functions, uh, functions that take in numbers, I'll definitely think about zero, one, and two. When testing strings, I'll think about strings of length zero, strings of length one, strings of length two. Okay. Um, in fact, before we get back to writing the code, which I know is what you want to do, you want to jump into the code right away. It feels unnatural to spend time doing test cases first. Uh, but let me just review real quick. Uh, in a, from the notes. Da, 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 da. You can go and uh, run corner cases uh, and I want to try other strings as well. If I'm doing numbers, test zero. If I'm doing strings, test a string of length zero. If I'm doing numbers, uh, choose one. If I'm doing strings, include a string of length one. By the way, if I'm doing numbers, yeah, a negative number. Doesn't make sense for this problem, but I'm going to consider that. I'm going to say, hey, are there any uh, test cases that use a negative number? Well, blend is only taking strings. How about a string of negative, oh, no such thing as a string of negative length, so that, that doesn't apply. If my function were to be taking in numbers, I'd think about negative number, I'd think about fractions. Um, if I were writing a Boolean function, uh, I'd, where some of the inputs were Boolean, make sure I try a test where I pass in true, another test where I pass in false. Um, 
if I'm writing a function that returns a Boolean, I'd better make sure that some of my tests return true and other tests return false, because uh, I don't want to say somebody come to come along and uh, write a function that th their code just says return false and have it pass all my test cases, because I only tested those had test cases for that. Um, if that happened, my test cases would be validating somebody else's really crappy code. Uh, when you're writing test cases, the the way to think about it, it's a weird mindset, it's an adversarial mindset. It's like, hey, I'm going to write the test cases, imagine some other idiot is going to write the code. And by the way, often that other idiot is me in a few hours, okay? Me in a few hours at two in the morning when I'm tired and making dumb mistakes, okay? Um, I'm writing test cases, somebody, some other idiot is going to write the code. If their code passes my test cases, management's going to say, great, the code seems to work, let's ship it. If it turns out there's a bug later on, who are they going to blame? They're not going to blame the programmer. They're going to blame the person who said this code was ready to go. They're going to blame the person who wrote the test cases that all passed. So when writing test cases, think about weird corner cases um, and make sure you cover all your bases so that uh, stupid code won't pass if it's incorrect. So, OK. Uh, and then certainly we'll think about typical inputs of strings of several words long. Uh, we saw that for blend. If I'm writing a numeric function, yeah, I'll take, you know, pass in 0 and 1 and maybe a negative number, maybe a fractional number, and 17. Um, okay. And the one last thing I want to mention is we only need one of each of these tests. Once I've uh, had a function that passes in a string of length 17, I don't need five more functions that pass in strings of length 9 and 12 and 15. I think checking 17 and then length 0 and 1 and maybe 2, uh, that is plenty good. So, Okay, now let's go back to our uh, code and actually write the implementation in the next little section.